What's up y'all? This is Tom and this is Like a Math Class. In this video, we're going to talk about the four basic rules of derivatives. You may have done this with the first principle. You found what a derivative is. You've looked at that. Uh, you've worked through some examples. You've found a pattern. You've come to a conjecture of what a derivative actually looks like. And now we're going to solidify it and kind of create these general rules that we can use as shortcuts. You're not going to have to use uh, the first principle to find the derivative pretty much ever again, to my knowledge, uh, but you will be using these four shortcuts over and over and over and over again. So let's get to it and see what we find. Now, the most important thing before I even get into all of this, the thing I really want to stress is what the actual derivative is. And I've, I wrote it out here for us. The derivative of any function is the equation for the slope of the function at any given point. So what we're doing every single time we find the derivatives, you need to keep on repeating this in your head or kind of say it to yourself as you're doing this over and over and over again. You want to make sure that you're, you're really sinking this in, that the derivative of a function, whenever we take the derivative, that's the equation for the slope of that same function at any point along the curve of that function. So what were some of the things that we saw? One of the patterns we saw is uh, we had if x if we had x to some power if we had a variable to some constant power then the derivative is n times x to the n minus one and uh, we called that the power rule. It's the power rule because we're working with uh, the exponents. It's also the power rule because this is probably one of the most powerful rules of derivatives that you can use and that you can know. The second one that we had is what if we take a constant c is a constant, where c is a constant, and we have a constant times a function. Well, the derivative of that is just simply the constant times the derivative. And we call this, or I call this anyway, this is the constant multiplier rule. I don't know if our textbooks call it this, but that's what I call it. If we have uh, our, our function is just a constant, again, c being a constant, if our function is just a constant, then that means it's like y equals three or y equals negative two. And that's just a, a horizontal line. What is the slope of any horizontal line? It's zero. Here we go. The derivative of this is actually zero. So we'll just call this the constant rule. Just meaning that the derivative of a constant is always zero. And then finally, if we've got a function and it is the, the sum or the difference of different functions, then all you have to do is take the derivative of one of the first one and then you continue to add or subtract as appropriate uh, the derivative of the second one. And you can do this with the third one and the fourth one and the fifth one. You can have a whole long polynomial, but you're just taking the derivative of each individual piece and this I call the sum and difference rule. So let's play these out a little bit and see how they work with an actual example. Here's our first example. So we've got this function y equals 7x to the fourth plus 3x squared minus 9 minus 2 over x. Now, we don't know how to do a division problem yet. You'll learn that in some future videos. But right now, we don't know that. Uh, so what I want to do is I want to get this so x is, is uh, to some power. So I'm going to rewrite this function, and I'm going to just change that last term. And notice that I'm still rewriting it all. It might seem like a waste of time, but this is the notation is very important. Because as you work down your page, if you're saying y equals all of this, and you're saying then you, and if you just had y uh, equals, then you're still implying that this is still your original function. And all I did was take this x, I, I changed the exponent to a negative one, right, to bring it out, and now I've got the, now I can do all of my derivative rules. And at this point, I'm going to actually change over to y prime. And it's important to do that because again, as you're working down your paper, it's implied that this 
equals this, which equals this, and so on. And if you don't change your notation here, it's gonna look like you're saying the same function as you do this derivative, which is not the same thing. We're finding the derivative of the function, we're finding the equation of the slope of that function, so it's a completely different thing. So notation is very important. As you're first learning this, you'll probably just be taking the derivatives of all these things and you're just gonna be kind of throwing it all together. You're practicing it in your, your head. You're doing some, uh, some mental math with all of this, but, but you need to keep the notation consistent. Key tip. So how do I find the derivative of all this? Now, here's what I do is, is in my head, I'm gonna do it over here to the side. If I've got seven X to the fourth power, this is what I'm doing in my head is I'm taking four times seven to use the constant multiplier rule, and then I'm gonna subtract one from that power. So as I do that, the derivative of seven x to the fourth, again, four comes down times seven, I'm gonna have 28 times x to the third power. That's using the, the power rule or, or the constant multiplier rule. I'm gonna do the same thing with my three x squared. Let's look at three x squared. I'm going to bring this down and I'm going to subtract one. So that's going to be plus six X to the first power. Now I've got minus nine. The derivative of any constant is zero. So I could do minus zero. You probably wouldn't do that on any normal thing. We never write plus or minus zero, but we'll leave it in there just so we can map out everything that's happening. And then finally we've got, uh, 2x or minus 2x to the minus 1 power. So I'm going to multiply this negative 1 out here and I'm going to subtract 1. So I'm left with negative 1 times negative 2. Now positive 2x to the minus 2 power. Minus 1, minus 1, minus 2. And now I'm just going to do uh, any simplifying that I can, kind of get rid of some of this, this muckety muck in here and just simplify it out. Uh, so y prime is going to be 28x cubed, that's a 3, 20, 28x cubed, cubed, plus 6x plus 2x to the minus 2. Now sometimes you might, you you know, it's, it's really kind of here nor there, uh, it's kind of personal preference, but you know, sometimes you might want to do this and, and just make that back into a fraction. I don't know if that really makes it any better or worse of an equation. Um, but I would say really these two are the two ways that you wanna write this as your final answer for this problem. So that's it. Using the four different rules, I think we used them all there. We had the constant multiplier rule. We had the constant rule. Uh, we used the product rule or the power rule with the constant multiplier. So that's kind of a cheat, but we used the power rule in there. And then we used the, uh, what's the last one? What's number four? The sum and difference rule. So we used all four of them in there. Uh, I hope that helps. Remember, until you learn the product rule and the quotient rule and even the chain rule, what you have to do is you have to expand this out so you've got a polynomial with all these pluses and minuses in between each of these terms, and then you just take the derivative of each one. Once you get uh, move ahead and you get into the chain rule, product rule, and quotient rule, uh, then you can, of course, start using those rules as well. I hope that helps. I'll see you in the next video.